This is my meal prep. Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how I meal prep for the weekend, um, which helps me to stay on track. So, hope you like this video. So, the first thing you always want to do is preheat the oven to 375 for about 45 to 50 minutes because this is where the cooking will happen. Make sure you spray your pan so nothing sticks. And while the oven is preheating, this is when we're gonna start to prep our food. So for the meat, I only do chicken. Um, you can choose whatever meat you would like. Um, but first I wash it, of course. Um, I slice it so I can make sure that it cooks all the way through. And then I add my seasoning, which I use sasson. Um, you can use garlic, anything, and I add lime juice. The next thing I do is I start to prep my potatoes. I only eat sweet potato right now. Um, you can use any potato, of course. So what I do to make my sweet potatoes is first I wash the skin and the potatoes so the skin comes off easier and I peel off the skin with a knife. Then I will start to chop it up and get it ready to bake. So I just cooked my breakfast. I'm not going to show it to you yet, but now after I cook my breakfast, um, this is when I make my veggies. So for the day, I'm going to have asparagus that I'm just going to throw off. I cut off the, the stems because it just hurts my tummy. I notice that when I have it with the stems, it just, yeah, it just doesn't work well with my stomach. So I'm just going to lay these bad boys on here. These are organic asparagus. <clears throat> And then, while that's cooking, I do a broccoli floret that, um, let's see. I'm probably just gonna save for this weekend, to be honest. So I'm gonna bring this bag to my boyfriend's brother's house um, and I'll steam them over there. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make my pre-workout uh, smoothie. Um, it's gonna be half a banana half a cup of oats, ice, um, one tablespoon of peanut butter, one scoop of protein. I, ha I cannot have whey protein, but I ran out of vegan protein and I need to have protein. So I'm just gonna take it and yeah, let's make this shake. This is my breakfast today. Um, I am on a meal plan again, so yeah. So I have one apple, one tablespoon of peanut butter, and one, uh, three ounces of lean protein. And I chose egg whites and spinach today because I can have any amount of grains. Um, I actually didn't work out this morning because my body was just so fatigued. Um, I overslept and I'm the type of person that like, if I oversleep, that means my body needed rest because if I do wake up on time, I'm still gonna go even if my body feels like crap. <laughs> um, so that's a sign for me, but I'm still gonna get in my calories, so. Yeah. So by the way, when this oven hits like five, six minutes, I actually click clear off to turn off the degrees so that way you can kind of just broil and sit in there and just cook while, you know, it's still gonna be hot, but it's just still gonna cook. And I just leave the timer on and my asparagus is done. So all I have to do is assemble at this point and I can enjoy my breakfast.
best way to meal prep, remember, is to make everything in bulk, guys. Like, you don't have to lay out, you know, 17, 24 meals and put them in the fridge and you know you're probably not going to enjoy them. So, some tips that I have is to, you know, get, like, the bigger Tupperware things. I actually... I think my family ordered Chinese food and I just kept the Tupperware, but I'm sure you can find these anywhere on Amazon or something. Um, in order to keep the, the chicken juicy throughout the week, um, I bake my chicken like I showed you earlier. So I've noticed when I grill my chicken, um, the only way it stays juicy is if I literally drown it in lemon and lime juice from like unnecessary amounts of lemon and lime juice the whole time but baking is just easier and it does stay juicy throughout the week um my rice i put like a lot of like i cook it as regular on the stove and then i pour um water over it and then i let it steam and uh and then it's just good through the week like it's not cr crusty or anything like it's pretty good and then I have my sweet potatoes along with more of the sweet potatoes that I baked. And then I cook my greens in the morning because greens, I just do not like prepped. Like, unless it's roasted, then I like it, but then it still tends to get like soggy and gross. So now we're just gonna start assembling the meals. I wanna show you guys real quick how I weigh out my meals. Um, so my first meal, I put the Tupperware on the scale. It's gonna weigh it. I put on, uh, make sure it doesn't say fluid ounces, but pounds and ounces, and then I just zero it out, so that way it's back to zero. Then I want it to be three ounces of chicken, so just grab 2.2, 3.2, doesn't have to be exact, right, but I'm OCD like that, so... Yeah. There you go, 3.0. And then I do the same thing, so if I want rice, I zero it out again. And then I go ahead. And I start to portion out my rice, so. That's to be three ounces. That's two ounces. Three ounces of rice, or 3.1. There y'all go. <laughs> and you do the same thing, so just keep zeroing it out um, for every measurement. This is my meal prep. Yep. And remember guys, like I'm going to, so I'm gonna strict meal plan until I'm in a safe spot for my reverse diet where my calories are a little higher, then I will get more macro flexibility. Um, as for now, I'm fine with this meal plan. Like, I actually am gonna make a video, like a meal plan versus macros. And I know you guys saw in my last video, I was very hesitant about the meal plan but I can swap things out, like it gives me a lot of structure and I'm super type A, so I think it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just gonna figure out how to pack my meals now and I think uh, I'm gonna bring some groceries. No, I'll leave some here and then I'll buy some more there. Yeah, I'm just thinking like ahead of time. Um, when you're going out of town or if you know you're gonna have a long weekend ahead of you, it's vital to plan ahead of time, so. You know, I'm, I have my meals for today. What I'm going to be bringing is my chicken, my rice, the sweet potatoes I just baked. I'm gonna bring that all to Andrew's, which is my 
boyfriend's brother's house. Um, and then if anything, I'll just buy some more groceries there and see what happens. But I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about myself. I'm responsible when it comes to staying on track. Um, but I'm gonna have fun. I can't show you guys. All right, so I got my meals packed. Have some jasmine rice, got broccoli in there. Got my oats for my smoothie. Got two bananas, because that should be enough for three days for my smoothies. And then I, I got the chicken, rice, sweet potato. Bam! And then I got my lunch for today. Yeah. <laughs> say hi. This is the real Bobby. The real Bobby? Where's the fake Bobby? I don't have to see him. He's out of this dress. Look, look, this is what's going on. There was a tornado, apparently. Yeah, it went over I-4. Right after I went by, I could have died. You were fine. You were probably like, it just flown in the air. Okay, so I'm gonna make my breakfast, which as you guys know. Well, not my breakfast, but my pre-workout meal. We're gonna go to this gym nearby. I'm just gonna hit like a full body workout. I really wanna hit some hip thrusts some shoulder presses like I'm just gonna go through like all the workouts that I've been wanting to work on and just do those um, as you guys know I didn't go yesterday because um, I overslept and my body was just like knocked out so um, definitely going today um, only thing I forgot was protein powder and of course ugh, whey protein two days in a row I hate whey. It makes my stomach like feel like I need to use the bathroom a thousand times. Uh, but I'm gonna use his brother's golden standard whey. It's super lean. It's 24 grams of protein, one gram of fat, and one carb for one scoop. So I'm gonna do that with my one tablespoon of peanut butter, um, ice, and I brought oats. So I could do half a cup of oats. Oh, and I froze my bananas. So freezing your bananas will make it bombs. That's what I'm gonna do. Something I wanna show you guys, like the importance of weighing and measuring your actual, um, you know, measurements, I guess you could say. Um, because if something says one tablespoon, one cup, half a cup, you know, or one slice of bread equals this amount, like on a, on a package or something, that doesn't necessarily mean it is the caloric intake that it says. So, for example, the sandwich thins, right? It says serving size, one roll. One roll is 57 grams, 57 grams is 2.5 grams of fat, 27 grams of carbs, 6 grams of protein. That one roll could be 65 grams. And that's overcompensating. Now you don't really have to worry about that kind of thing that much. Um, if you're just trying to like, you're just getting into tracking macros and all that. But if you're competing or you're in off season, um, or you're just got into your reverse diet, it is important because you don't want to, those things add up. So I'm going to show you right now, one tablespoon this is the measurement, right? Um, a lot of people will scoop it, there'll be a lot on top, and they'll consider that still one tablespoon. I like to literally make sure that it's one tablespoon. So, one tablespoon is 16 grams. So I'm just gonna get... Okay, look at that. So this is one tablespoon that like anybody would get, right? And it says 25 grams. And 25 grams of peanut butter is a massive difference versus 16 grams. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna scrape that off. So I scrape the top off and uh, you know, all the extra shit, excuse my language. And it's at 16 grams now. So now you can use it. Ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen. Learn from your girl Lexi and don't put a banana in the freezer with the peel on. <laughs> yeah, I put it in with the peel on so now I am heating up water and I'm just gonna throw the banana in the water and hope for the best because I have no bananas. I'm not going out and getting warmer. Let's see if this works. Ooh, it's working. I think I'm good now. Let's see. Very good, very good. This is a perfect metaphorical life lesson that you may have a plan, things may not go your way, but you don't quit, you figure it out. You figure out a way to make it work and it comes out 10 times better. Mm -hmm. And yes, I am using my protein shake as an example. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, in all seriousness, um, a good pre-workout meal is something that has an even moderate amount of carbs, fats, protein, um, uh, a mixture of simple carbs like bananas um, and some complex carbs like the oats. So simple carbs are fast digesting, they hit your system right away to be used for energy, fruits, cereals, that kind of thing. Complex carbs are exactly what they sound like, more complex. So potatoes, rice, bread, those are slow digesting, those sit in your stomach. So. Um, having a good amount of fats as well, like the peanut butter, will help to keep my blood sugar levels even throughout my workout and keep me stable throughout my workout. And of course the protein will help to inhibit protein synthesis, which as most of us know, um, helps to gain protein, I mean muscle, and recovery. So yeah. My boyfriend's about to go get coffee right now from this Cuban place during a freaking tornado. So. Once he gets back, we will hit the gym. See you in a bit. Are you equipped for this tornado? No. No. <laughs> Hey guys, so starting off with my leg day, I did start with barbell squats of four sets of 12 reps. Of course, this is after activating the glutes, warming up, stretching, all that good stuff. Um, to squat with proper form with a barbell, you wanna stand with the bar on your upper back, um, your feet shoulder width apart. You wanna squat down by pushing your knees to the side while moving your hips back. You wanna break parallel, so that means squatting all the way down until your hips are lower than your knees. Squat back up while keeping your knees out and chest up and stand with your hips and try not to lock your knees out and try not to hinge forward with your pelvis. I see a lot of girls do that to try to squeeze the glutes, but it really can actually cause harm to the lower back. So my goal here is to have a progressive overload approach. So with all my weights, I am working on weight. All right, my next and favorite workout that I'm actually going to be focusing on gaining strength in for the next six weeks and the rest of my off season, to be honest, are hip thrusts. Um, some of the things that I've learned with hip thrusts is to try to find a lower bench. I've noticed like I've tried to do it with higher benches and it makes it extremely difficult. You can also try with the Smith machine. And if you're a beginner, I would recommend trying with um, just some body weight um, and band, or you can use one of the easy bars that are actually pictured in the back. Now, the actual, um, you know, form for this is you wanna make sure that 
your 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 back like your delt area is your upper back is going to be on the bench and you want to basically move in a downward downward rotation and literally thrust up by squeezing your glutes at the top um, you want to keep your toes pointed outward slightly and you really want to push through the heels So this next one that I'm doing is single leg Romanian deadlifts. Um, these are going to look a little tricky and they are. I'm actually not a big fan of this workout, but I do feel it in my hamstrings and glute area. Um, so for this one, you're going to, you know, act like you're going to be doing Romanian deadlift, but keep your legs a little closer together and just separate your legs. The most important thing is you wanna make sure that you're not using your lower back mainly to do this workout. This um, other workout that I'm doing is, of course, the famous hip abductor machine. I like to hold on to the front so I can really target my glutes. Um, and you just want to make sure that you're using your knees to push out and nothing else. From the gym. Oh, tall brass. That one was the back of the house. probably wondering if I had any of those treats I just showed you and the answer is I did um, but not out of moderation and that is the key I had one slice of pizza a couple of the these little chocolate things um, I had like two of the Snickers ones um, but in moderation, right? Like, um, and how was I able to do that? Being prepared ahead of time with my meals, um, as you guys saw that I had all my meals, like, with me, able to prepare. My meals are clean, they're healthy, they are satiating, so I wasn't even really wanting any of that stuff. Um, which is my next topic that I do want to get into. When you are prepping, when you are dieting, when you get off of competition prep, you are going to deal with a lot of outside factors that may or may not determine the choices that you make. So, there will be you, yourself, um, determined maybe not determined, whatever state you're in, right? But not only do you have to deal with that, you have to deal with people who don't understand being like, oh, you're free now. You can eat whatever you want. So why aren't you eating whatever you want? Here, have this. You're gonna have people shoving food in your face. You're gonna have people judging you for you know, wanting to still stay on track. They're not gonna understand. They're gonna be like, well, I thought you were free now. When you explain that you still have to eat clean on a reverse diet in order to save your body from gaining double the amounts of fat, they're going to roll their eyes. It's going to happen. So what's my point here? My point here is you're going to start to get invited back out to things. You're going to start to, you know, have wine nights and you're going to have that freedom. Um, do not feel obligated to eat the pizza, to eat the ice cream, to, you know, have one of the brownies. Don't feel obligated to because you're off prep or because they don't understand and you don't want to seem like you're obsessive. There comes a point in time where you have to take what they think and just throw it out the window. <laughs> because if what their thoughts are doing deter you from reaching your goals, 
then you will be a slave to their thoughts for the rest of your life. And I don't know about you, but that kind of sucks more than anything. Um, if you continue to care what people think, then your goals, you might as well just not even, not even, not that you might as well just not even be following your goals, but are you doing this for you or doing this for them? And you need to ask yourself that when, you know, people make fun of you or they don't understand. All you have to do is just think to yourself, all right, is what this person's saying and doing, it, it has no effect on my goals. Like, me eating that, like say for example, your coworker is like, here's some brownies they made, like, why don't you want one, like have one, like you're off prep now, and you feel like obligated to have one, because you're like, oh shit, like I don't wanna seem like I'm obsessive, like I feel bad, like she made them for me, like I'm just gonna have one, like whatever. Um, you having that brownie does not affect their goals. It does not affect them. I don't know why people even care what you eat or what you choose to do. But you eating their brownie does not affect them, but it does affect you. And if what they're doing or saying has a negative effect on your goals, you need to reevaluate what that person's role in your life is. And if they don't have that big of a role, then why do you care? That is the point I'm trying to make. Boom, that is what I'm trying to make. Anyway, that is my point, is that you have things in moderation. My whole basis on this was that I did have like a pizza and like a couple of chocolates because I did feel obligated to. I didn't even really want it. I, and that was a weak moment on my end because I didn't want it, but like, you know, you, you feel like you crack under pressure that like people are just like, you know, does she have an eating disorder? Like, is she obsessive? Like, why? Like. I also feel like people feel obligated to eat super clean around me because maybe they feel judged by me that I'm super healthy or that I'm following a plan, like you're not being judged. Um, and if you feel that way, then that's probably your own insecurities of not, you know, being super, super healthy, which is fine, like projecting onto me. So I'm like venting right now, okay? But yeah. I'm gonna show y'all my breakfast and everything, and yeah, I'm gonna see a body update. I've been doing this weekend is watching scary movies. We saw the movie Eli on Netflix. Uh, the Joker, we saw Fractured on Netflix, and we're watching Midsummer today, so I wanna show you guys. But I've been gaining muscle, y'all. Like, it's crazy, it's crazy. I can't wait. So my, like, I really want to do like six freaking shows next year. Like, I'm trying to go ham. I'm trying to go hard to pay. <laughs> going to Starbucks. Where is it? <laughs> My boyfriend, by the way, like a lot of you guys have seen him in like, like my Bahamas, maybe you guys have seen him in my Bahamas video, but this him, his name's Bobby, say hi Bobby. I don't like this. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Penguin. <laughs> Yay. Stop. I love Starbucks. I don't care what anyone says. Everyone says that though. <sighs> I'm gonna go eat. So good. Um, I got the Grande Ice Caramel Cloud Macchiato with almond milk and I substituted with sugar-free vanilla. Oh my god, Starbucks just makes me so happy if you can't tell.